Well, hey guys, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Today we are going to be talking about solar flares, EMPs, and why you should have some cash always on hand. Now, I know uh, in my last uh, broadcast I talked about uh, the uh, tidal flow possibly stopping uh, in our lifetime and how that could create a... Uh, uh, what would, what they call a mini ice age in the northern hemisphere and heat waves in the southern hemisphere. And, you know, but I said that that's, that's probably something that could possibly happen in our lifetime, might not happen for another hundred years or something like that, may not happen at all. But today I'm going to be talking about, uh, solar flares creating an EMP and what that is. And it is something that can happen, uh, is happening uh, right now, uh, and it could cause uh, some serious effects uh, to your life here in this uh, here on this earth. So, so uh, many of you probably noticed that uh, probably noticed that uh, last week there was a cell phone outage for a lot of people, and there was, it was all over the internet and the news and everything else about wondering what was going on. Part of the concern was is that we are in what is called a solar maximum, and they were concerned that possible solar flares had created an EMP that had knocked out uh, cell phone service. But it turns out that that wasn't the case, at least that's what they say. Uh, and the reason that they say it wasn't a, the result of a solar flare is because it only seemed to affect one cell phone company, AT&T, and I think maybe Verizon, but AT&T AT uh, phones. And a solar flare wouldn't affect just one company, okay? It would affect all cell phone companies, all so cell phone services in, service in an area where the EMP was strong. So, uh, first, let's explain. An EMP stands for electromagnetic pulse. And a, if an electromagnetic pulse is, it comes from a very high, uh, source of energy, it can knock out electronic appliances. It can knock out cell phones. It can knock out communications. It can take down the internet. It can even knock satellites out, uh, that we use for communication. It can affect anything that uses, uh, a microchip or microcomputer board, uh, which is most everything these days and it can affect anything even motors and that that use microprocessors it can affect LED anything with an LED light in it it can knock those out and this has actually happened in the past so they know that it can happen uh, and the the general cause of it is a huge burst of energy now the sun sits up here and is and you know the earth is here and we're rotating around and the sun is made up of a big ball of gas and every once in a while for no explained reason it spits out a solar flare and that solar flare has so much energy which they call radiation uh, that it can knock out power if it happens to hit the earth now we're a little teeny teeny planet compared to the sun, okay? And we're a long distance away. Most of these solar flares that happen from the sun, they happen in a direction that is not directed towards Earth, okay? So even though it might be a, a fairly good-sized solar flare, it generally is not going to affect the Earth or our electronics or anything like that because it's not directed in a pattern that would affect the Earth. However, <laughs> and here's the scary part, we just happen to be at a solar maximum uh, where a hot spot, which is the, which is the spot on the sun, uh, where a solar flare is most likely to develop and spit out, just happens to be in the general vicinity pointing at the earth. And we know that this happens, uh, the, the solar, uh, flare cycle happens about every 11 years. They, they determine that. They know how often this happens. They didn't think that this solar maximum was going to happen until next year, but it turns out they're about a year off. And, uh, right now, and for the next year, possibly two years, we are going to be in a, what they call a solar maximum, where we're going to have a lot more flares and the flares will be bigger. And the result is it could, it could uh, release enough energy that it would affect the electronics, cause an EMP and knock out electronics and things on Earth. Also, 
the the uh, more serious damage uh, could be that it could be so large that it would actually burn off the ozone, and the ozone around the Earth is what protects us. That holds in our oxygen and all the other things that we need to survive on Earth. If you burn off the ozone, that would be really bad for life on Earth. Now, it probably even a very maximum solar flare probably wouldn't burn off all of the ozone. But what it would do is, and you probably all remember this from your childhood days, the greenhouse gases, the CFLs from the CFLs, the chlorofluorocarbons that were going up into uh, the uh, northern atmosphere above the uh, above the poles and was causing a hole in the ozone. So you probably remember that. It's been quite a few years ago. But it might have even happened before some of you were born. But we had a real big concern. So they banned CFLs because those gases were going up and eating the ozone. And when you eat the ozone, there's no real protection from the sun's rays. So you're getting the full maximum effect of the sun's rays through there. And that, of course, is going to to increase melting of the Arctic, uh, melting of the Arctic, and you know creates all kinds of problems, which we've talked about in my other videos. And it can also cause uh, irradiation, and enough skin cancer, and things like that, because you're not getting any protection from the ozone to keep those direct sun rays from coming in and hitting the Earth. So a big solar flare can cause a lot of problems here on Earth if the solar spot where the solar flare is coming out from is directed in the general vicinity of the Earth. And it just happens to be that we have a solar spot on the sun, uh, and it is in the general direction of the Earth. So we're going to be experiencing more solar flares. Now, we just had one that they've measured, and I'll read. This is from the article, and I'll put the link down there so you can go read the article. Uh, this is from LiveScience.com. It says, third X-class solar flare in 24 hours is the most powerful for six years, and it may not be the last. A hyperactive sunspot recently unleashed its third X-class flare flare in under 24 hours. The X-class flare is the most powerful since 2017, could be followed by equally massive explosions. Now, again, generally the sunspots are not directed towards Earth, so they can measure a sun flare somewhere else, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to affect the Earth if it's not directed at us. This this is bigger because this is directed in our, in our, general, in our general vicinity. Okay, it says... Uh, the, it says, a massive hyperactive sunspot has just unleashed its third class solar flare, the most powerful type of solar explosion in less than 24 hours. The latest flare, which is the largest of the current solar cycle, is the sun's most intense outburst since 2017. An even more powerful explosion could be on the way. The flurry of sun-shaking eruptions is a stark reminder that we are on the verge of entering an explosive peak of solar cycle, the solar maximum, and are likely to see even more intense and potentially destructive solar storms over the next few years. Okay, no big deal, right? All right, so here's the situation. If a massive solar uh, flare was to hit the Earth, uh, it, it would very likely knock out electronics. Okay, uh, and it would not. It could that could even mean that your vehicles won't run, uh, your cell phones won't work, many of the appliances, your laptop computers, things like that in your house probably won't work, and they could be destroyed permanently by a solar flare of a large enough variety. Uh, and like I said, it would also f could possibly affect the ozone, burning off the ozone, but that would be a long-term effect, where the short-term effect would be your power could be knocked out, uh, you know, generator stations and that, they all use microcomputers and everything like that, uh, regardless of what it is, you could lose your power. Uh, even off-gooders like me, uh, if your systems is set up so that you're using uh, LED or micro microprocessor inverters or something like that. They could go out and so you could lose power. So, you know, this is something that could affect everybody. It wouldn't just affect some people. And I just had an experience uh, where I kind of got a, a taste of that, of what could happen, because I went to town uh, to do some shopping the other day, picked up a few things at the store, got up to the cashier, was getting ready to pay with my debit card, which is what I usually use because that goes off my checking account, and uh, their system went down. And they couldn't accept any credit cards or any debit cards. So 
I, I would generally have been stuck and several people in line of, in line with me, they didn't have anything, any cash to pay for. Now it so happens that I always, I always carry some cash in my wallet and I had a $20 bill that I always keep in my wallet and that was enough to cover what I needed to pay for and I was able to, to get out of there without using a CC or a debit card. But there were several people in line that were really upset uh, because that's all they had was digital currency. They were using a credit card, a debit card, Card or an EBT card of some type, and they could only pay for their stuff with that. And if that system is down because it was knocked out from whatever type of EMP caused it, solar flare, or I'll talk about another type of EMP, but if it's knocked out, those communication systems don't work. Stores, banks, any business that relies on a credit card or debit card or digital currency to pay for their merchandise uh, is probably not going to work. And so cash is king. You would at least, if you have a $20 bill in your wallet, I, I recommend at least a $20 bill in your wallet that you just carry around, fold it up, put it in a little hidden spot in your wallet, and don't touch it. All right? Then if you need it, you'll have that if you have to make a purchase, and it happens to be that the system goes down for whatever reason, whether it's a solar flare or a system change or some other reason. Now, getting back to the cell phone situation, AT&T now says that they think that the cause of the outage was an, a uh, software update that they were doing and apparently screwed up and so the software update knocked down the system for a while and so they don't think that this was a result of a solar flare that's what they're saying I probably te I, I tend to believe that since it only affected one company and didn't affect all the other cell, cell phone services that was not a result of a solar flare that was probably a result of a software update uh, it could happen for mechanical reasons or it could happen for update or software Software, it could happen from hacking and that's another cause of a possible blackout and this has been happening a lot more frequently in fact we know that other countries are trying to constantly attack our grid power uh, they're attacking hospitals uh, and stealing data and they're hijacking and holding businesses hostage uh, for their data and shutting them down so they can't use any of their systems so there's a real possibility whether it's from an EMP or from a hacking attack or something like that there's a real possibility that the electronic systems, uh, the internet and cell phones and all that that we rely on and the businesses rely on to conduct business could go out and you wouldn't be able to use uh, digital currency. So again, that's why I recommend that you have money in your wallet, cash money in your wallet. Now, like I said, I always carry a $20 bill in my wallet whenever I'm locally here. If I'm on the road and I'm traveling, I'm usually carrying at least $100 in my wallet. And I recommend instead of a $100 bill, put it in 20s and put that in your wallet because stores and businesses may not be able to break down a $100 bill. They get kind of suspicious about too many $100 bills anyway. But they may not be able to break a $100 bill to pay for whatever you need, gas or groceries or whatever, or medicines. And that's one thing that I really want to... Uh, talk about here if you're on medicines that you, that you need for your life uh, and you can't pay for them with CC or debit card you could be in really bad shape so that's why you want to have some cash on hand now like I said I keep a 20 in my wallet 100 if I'm traveling uh, but I recommend that you have enough cash on hand uh, that would probably take care of at least your essential needs uh, for food groceries and medicine uh, for at least a month Okay, that is my recommendation, is that you have that on hand, find a safe place, get a lock box, a safe or something like that to keep it in so it's safe at your house, okay, but I would recommend you have at least a month's worth of cash on hand to pay for whatever things that you might need in the event that your credit card or your debit card won't work. All right, folks, the other EMP, EMP that I will briefly mention, but also kind of fits into this, would be a electromagnetic pulse from a nuclear explosion, okay? And this has also been a concern because recently uh, the Russians have made some threats that they could set off a nuclear bomb up in space or up in the, the stratosphere uh, that would affect all of the satellites. And the plan is that they think if they knock out all the satellites, of course, that, that the economy could collapse, a country could collapse uh, without doing any damage on the ground. If you explode a nuclear explosion up in the air, it may not do any damage at all down here to the structures, uh, and you may not even, and it may not even kill people because it's up so high, the radiation's up there, but the electromagnetic pulse could knock out all the electronics. So it is a tactic that Russia and other countries, including the U.S., I'm sure, have considered using uh, as a way of warfare in which you don't kill a lot of 
of people or destroy the buildings, but you knock out all their systems, all right? And because Russia is making threats, and we know North Korea has made threats, uh, you know, that's something that could also uh, create an EMP that could knock out our systems. Now, if that happens, okay, you probably have more to worry about uh, than just your electronic systems not working because if there's a nuclear explosion up in the stratosphere, we're probably at war and there's probably going to be lots of nuclear uh, warheads flying all over the place. And so, you, you know, that's a whole different situation than we're talking about uh, just, just an EMP solar flare that might knock out electronics. However, a country may decide to take advantage of that situation too. All right, folks, I hope this was interesting. Uh, and again, I'm not trying to be a doomsayer or say that any of these things are going to happen. I don't know. It's just based on what the scientists are saying is a possibility. I will put the link to this article in the uh, information uh, for the video, and you can go and look at that, read it, study it, research it yourself. Now, on a side note, uh, if any of you are interested in learning about off-grid living, setting up your own solar power systems, building an off-grid cabin like I live in here, I have a really good book for you available uh, this book here is called solar cabin off-grid cabin plans and I've got over 10 different types of off-grid cabins that you could build and most of these are fairly inexpensive these are cabins that can be built for like under ten thousand dollars some of them under five thousand dollars you could build yourself I also include basic solar power information in here you can also get my off-the-grid book which is more intense on homesteading and off-grid living you can get these on Amazon uh, a very reasonable price price you can get the full book with all of the plans in it or you can get the individual plans and the ebook plans for an individual cabin is only five dollars folks okay that's less than a happy meal these days isn't it all right on amazon i will put my link down in the information you can go check out my books i would appreciate it uh the support and that helps support my channel and keep my systems running all right folks have a great day